Hey guys, Darren here. Thanks for joining the Stock Option Market Weekly Update for the week of October 7th, 2024. We're going to touch on where we are in the S&P 500 year to date, how the different sectors have performed last week year to date and what it looks like moving forward. We're going to touch on some of the economic that came out last week and what's coming out this week. And then we're going to jump into the live trades on the option trading platform. I'm going to show you exactly what we are trading and wow, we've been doing well. So stay tuned. Hey guys, Darren here. We've got a great video for you here today. However, if you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making these videos, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. It really helps out the channel and I appreciate it. So thank you very much. Also, download the free options workshop in the link below. It talks about the two main benefits of trading options over buying stocks alone outright. There's also a paid course as well. Disclaimer, I'm not a financial planner and I'm not recommending trades. Please do your own research. And if you're new or learning options, I recommend you start small. All right, guys, so let's look at where we are in the market right now. So this is, let's see. This is the Okay guys, hey, let's look at where we are in the market right now. Uh, this is the last five days. So we started the week at 57.38 in the SPX or the S&P 500 and we uh, ended up at 57.51. So almost flat for the week. And overall year to date, we are up 20%. We started the year at 47.43. So we're now at a PE ratio of 21. So it's still well above the 10 year average of 18. And if we look at the different sectors and how they performed, this is the five day last week. Energy was the big winner up 6.87%. And that was mainly due to Israel came out and indicated that they may uh, attack Iran's production uh, of oil. Uh, so their facilities. And uh, right now, the energy for me is uh, in a bull market. And actually, I've got a video. Uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, it either just came out before this one or it's coming out right after. I'm not sure which one I'm going to release uh, first. But uh, I think energy is a huge opportunity right now. And if we look year to date at the different sectors, look at that. Everything is up. Technology, 17. Utilities is up the biggest, 28%. Financials is up 21%, communication services 25%. If we look at the economic calendar uh, for uh, this week, um, we've got Thursday uh, uh, coming out the core CPI numbers, 0.2 expected and 2.3% a year over year core CPI. So we'll see where those uh, numbers come in at. So far, everything's looked good as far as uh, inflation being in check. And then Friday, we've got the PPI numbers as well. And then last week, we had uh, Wednesday, we had unemployment and uh, or employment numbers. Um, 128 uh, was the expectation. We had 143,000 um, employment uh, jobs. And here's the uh, the, the big one was right here on Friday. Uh, U.S. non-farm payrolls, 150,000 jobs expected, 254,000 is what it came, almost 100,000, or actually more than uh, 100,000 uh, 100, more uh, uh, employees, more jobs. So uh, unbelievable. And then you can see the unemployment rate came in below uh, at 4.1 with 4.2% expected. So all the inflation and, and employment numbers looked uh, pretty good last week. And uh, looking at FactSet Earnings Insight, you can just punch that in, you can come up with this report, but I like to look at this. Uh, for Q3, we had the S&P 500 at uh, is 4.2% earnings growth rate over the year. So down a little bit, it's been creeping down, but it's been staying around that 5% level. So things are good. Um, and then uh, you can see the, the valuation. They've got 20, oh, 21 for the, the PE is what they have. So it's still high compared to 18. Um, if we look at the numbers going forward, let's go over here to, it looks like page 14. Okay, so for Q4, they're projecting 
earnings growth of 14.6% and uh, revenue growth of 5.1%. So that's actually really good. And then for calendar year, uh, for the full calendar year, that would be 9.8 and 5. And then for 2025, they're looking at earnings growth of 14.9%. I think it was 15 last week and uh, revenue growth of 5.9%. So still good numbers are expected uh, for next year. And look, fear and greed index. Uh, I like to look at this. Uh, you know, uh, Buffett says, you know, be uh, fearful when others are greedy. So we're at 74. We're almost at extreme greed right now. This is when you want to be uh, fearful. That is why Buffett has, you know, almost 50% of his Berkshire Hathaway uh, funds. He's got a high percentage of cash right now. So he's expecting that recession, it seems like, in uh, Q1. And usually the Fed starts quantitative easing and cutting interest rates too late. And it takes 12 to 18 months for those changes to help the economy moving forward. So I believe that he thinks that there's a good chance of a recession. A lot of people do. Uh, so, uh, you know, you always want to, or I always want to be invested in the market. Um, but when I'm trading this type of account where I'm looking to grow it like a business versus my retirement stuff, which I just let, you know, Fidelity manage and leave that long term. But this account, I want to grow like a business. So I'm sitting, going to be sitting a lot in cash right now. And then once there's a drop, <clears throat> if there is, if a recession hits, then we've got cash on the sidelines and everybody's going to be fearful and they're going to get out of the market. And hey, that's when we get we get in. Be uh, greedy when others are feel, fearful, right? So let's uh, jump into the trades on the option trading platform. I utilize uh, Tasty Trade and uh, Moomoo. And uh, this is uh, some of the trades that I've got on right now. And I've got... I mentioned that energy sector. So CVX is Chevron. This is a trade that uh, I'm doing a video on. So keep your eyes out for it. And uh, I, I think this is going to do well going forward. I've already got Exxon Mobil down here. But uh, let's look at AMD to start with. Um, so semiconductor uh, stock. And we've got the 135-150 put credit spread and the 175-185 call credit spread. So it's an iron condor. And what I'm looking to do, you can see right here, I'm looking to... Uh, close that out next week. I've got a trade in there to close it out for a dollar to pay a dollar, but it's actually the market to trade to close that out would be 327. But uh, so I'm just kind of putting that as a placeholder because we're at 12. As long as you know, if the market's down uh, Monday morning tomorrow, then I'll probably uh, leave this on and let it go. But you can see AMD. Here's the profit uh, zone right here. We're still in that profit range at 170. I'm profitable uh, in that in that range, and we've got 327 left to collect in premium. I'm also going to put on a new trade because IVR is high at 63.9. Look at earn earnings coming out 10.29, so it is coming out later this month, and it could uh, move quite a bit but uh, again my target for AMD is much higher than where it is right now I'm bullish AMD up to almost 200 long term so I don't mind uh, being uh, long but I'm going to look to put on the 160 200 possibly next week and collect wow this would be uh, $4.19 so one option contract controls 100 shares so that's $419 that I would collect so uh, Avago is the next one, which is Broadcom, 160 to 182, uh, or you know the 182, 192, 10 dollar wide call spread and 10 dollar wide put spread, the 150, 160. So an iron condor uh, in Avago, and we are profitable. We're in the right in the profit range at 176 right now, so we're still uh, doing well. And uh, you know what? I had a trade on in. Uh, CL last week that we closed that eh, I'm not going to go through it, but we did really well oil. If you look at the futures here, let's go uh, market oil and we can go right here uh, $230 just uh, last week in uh, trading CL. And the reason that I did it was because oil hit that low. It was down here. And when it gets down to the $70 range, it moved up last week. But that's when I want to put on those put credit spreads and make those trades. 
but you can just see, uh, you know, 230 bucks just basically in a week. These, oh, uh, not looks like I started putting this on. Uh, yeah, back uh, beginning of September. So yeah, this is all in the last 30 days. Um, but I like oil long. I think it's going to con continue to head up. But we did close that out last week, just to let you know. Um, so Avago, we've got that uh, iron condor on. We need it to stay. It's at 176, 35 IVR. And let's go back to the positions here so we can see if earnings are coming up. No earnings in Avago. So I like trading it in this range. Uh, we've got 12 days left. I normally close it out at this stage, but I'm uh, going to, as long as we're not tested, I'll just uh, continue to collect premium uh every day and you can see this is the faded decay so we collect basically twelve dollars and seventy three cents so thirteen dollars a day for the next 12 days I, it changes every day but uh i'll take that as long as we're not tested i'll just let it uh, ride coin i've got two put credit spreads we've had uh here's where the the one these are the one year charts one day so you can see where here the yellow is the 200 day moving average the <clears throat> green versus the red, the green's the 13 day and the red is the fifth, uh, 50 day moving average. So we, uh, I like coin higher. Uh, my target for Coinbase is basically 100 points higher, easy from where it is right now. Uh, let me see what I actually have. I, yeah, I've got like a $300 target for coin. So hey, I'm a crypto fan, but uh, you can see. We've got the one, uh, 35, 145 and then 150, 160, but uh, we're profitable uh, in between that range and we're at 170 right now. Good IVR in coin. I recently did a video on coin, so uh, you can check that out. But we've got uh, $648 right here left in extrinsic in coin to collect just over the next 40 days. So as long as it stays between this uh, 145, uh, Oh, there's, there's no call. So I'm just long. So above the 145 and the 160, then we uh, collect. So all the way down to 154, we're uh, profitable. All right, CVX Chevron is the one that I'm putting on. Uh, I'm doing a separate video on this, so just check that out. But uh, I think uh, Chevron is a huge uh, uh, bull right now and oil. So I'm looking to collect. I've got this as a placeholder, but... It's trading at $3.08, so I'll collect $308 on Monday when I hit review and send and place this uh, trade in Chevron. So keep your eye on that video. Uh, DraftKings, we've been doing really well in uh, here to date. I know we've made over three grand. Uh, $34.86 over the last 365 days, just trading. And uh, what we're doing in... Um, DraftKings is a poor man's cover call. So I've got a deep in the money 30 call option that we bought over a year out. So 439 days to expiration, you can see right here. And then we've sold a 42 call against it. So um, as long as we stay under that 42, we, we've got 188 left to collect on the call. And then as it moves up, my target for DraftKings is 50. And you can see it's kind of a bullish pattern. But, you know, eventually I see us getting up to this 50 range again. So I'm going to keep my poor, playing the, the poor man's cover call. So uh, I just rolled out and collected more on the call. Uh, we're in November now. And then, you know, once we get down to 10 days or whatever, or we get tested, I'll, I'll continue to roll that call out. So I'll roll it up and out as we move up. Elf, Health and Beauty. I think this is kind of a recession-proof stock, but 58 IVR. Uh, Iron Condor, 100, 110 put credit spread, and the 120, 130 call credit spread. Uh, 333 left to collect in extrinsic. We are profitable all in this range. Right now we're 105. So even though we're below our short strike, we're still in the profit range uh, at expiration uh, with ELF. But I think it's a, a great stock. Uh, and uh, I'm long ELF, my target on ELF is quite a bit higher it's two hundred dollars and we're at 105 right now so you can see elf was up in over two hundred dollars not that long ago all right 
and then gold. Gold has been uh, trading in a range. We're at 244 right now. I've got two iron condors on in October and November, and uh, we've been doing well in gold. It's been trading uh, in a range, except it actually just broke out to the upside. So that kind of did hurt us a little bit. But still, I'm uh, in the uh, profit zone right now, right here. You can see. So we're in good shape right now, the way we've got set up uh, in October and November. Uh, and gold has a very high yeah, 67 IVR. So great for uh, trading iron condors, strangles. Uh, and selling premium, which is what we like to do because our probability of profit is much higher when we sell options versus buy them. The only way that I typically buy options is leaps, which are out over a year because then the time decay doesn't hurt you. So Google is another one, uh, 160, 155 put credit spread I put on, we're up 23 bucks. Uh, it's just been at a low um, and I, I'm bullish. I think Google's too good a company and they control the... Uh, uh, internet uh, access. They've got so many ways of revenue. They own what YouTube, uh, so ad revenue, a lot of different ways to make money. Um, they're a behemoth. Uh, L3, ticker LHX, 230 to 260. Um, we've done well. Actually, let's, let's go back and just look Google. I'm curious how we did over the last year in Google. Uh, 859 over uh, 859. I thought we did better, but 859 bucks over the last year in Google. So we haven't traded it a whole lot. Um, L3 Communications. Um, L3 is a great uh, defense stock. Uh, over the last year in L3, we've done pretty well, I believe. Yeah, 1527. Uh, so 1500 bucks in L3 over the last year as well. 230, uh, 220 put credit spread on 260, 270. So we're right in the middle there in the profit zone. Um, so everything's looking good. Um, they've got earnings on 1024, we can see right here. Um, but I'm long. Uh, we've got $300 left to collect in extrinsic. And I think uh, L3 actually is pretty fairly valued. It's just been moving up slowly over time. Uh, Micron way undervalued right now at 102. My target for Micron is much higher. Um, my target, I believe, is to uh, 160, so still quite a bit higher, but you can see it's been down. It's a huge AI stock, and storage is needed for uh, data, and uh, I've got a 9585 put credit spread, 120, 130, so I'm trading both sides. And you can see the profit range. We're at the lower end, exactly where I'd like to be. 38 days, no earnings coming up. I like that trade. ServiceNow, uh, actually, it moved up last week. We're still below. This is one I'm betting against and moving down, even though I love it. IBR is high, but it had a parabolic move up. So we made quite a bit um, as it moved up. And, uh, but, you know, right now it just started to move up again, but you know, I may close that up out if we get to if we continue to move up next week. You can just see on Friday we moved up 25 points. That's crazy. Um, but you know, hopefully we're we're at highs and uh, I can hang on to this and collect uh, more premium in service now. Um, Nvidia 12110 put credits for so again, iron condors. Um, and we're right in the middle between the, the uh, right in the middle of the profit zone. So uh, I like where we are. 124. We've got the 120, 130 um, short strikes on, and Nvidia targets much higher. Great AI stock, one of the best. And 140 is my target right now in Nvidia. Oxy oil stock. I've got a leaps on right there in Oxy and. We had a move up uh, last week in Oxy, so it's uh, starting to do well. Huge Buffett stock. He owns 27% of the company, uh, so I think it's going to continue to do well. Um, Super Micro, 43, 42. So we had a 10 for one split. So I had one share, uh, one credit spread on, and now I've got 10. <laughs> but uh, we're still below my profit zone at 41. So. 
I am in November, so we'll look to see. Hopefully that uh, continue, that it's been hammered um, due to some accounting deal and laying off some of their sales force, but they'll get things straight. It's an extremely volatile stock and uh, they've come through this type of thing before, but you can see where it was at, 123. So I expect that it's way undervalued right now. It's gonna move up over time. So I'm just gonna keep on uh, put credit spreads and roll them month after month going forward and collecting more premium. SoFi, love this uh, fintech stock, 8.36. We had a bit of a move up last week. Um, I've done many videos on SoFi. You can check those out, but these guys do banking and student loans are now due. Uh, lots of ways to make income. And I just uh, trade it on big down days. I'll buy more leaps and uh, on big up days, I'll sell some off. So just kind of play with it. But I love SoFi going forward. And you can see I've got 13 leaps options contracts. Tesla. Uh, Iron Condor as well, 225 to 310. They've got earnings on 1016, so right before this date. So that's going to be interesting. It's good. It could move a lot, but we're at the lower end and huge, you know, big IVR, 77. So I'm probably just going to leave this on and see how it does. I don't know. We've made 112 already on this, so maybe I will close it out, wait for earnings, and then put on an after earnings uh, trade. We'll see. Let me know what you're doing in Tesla, Ulta uh same situation iron condor we're at 381 it had moved down and uh yeah i i'm long ulta i, I know buffett owns ulta as well great value right now super strong uh financials if we look at the financials in ulta you can see look at their uh income statement and their balance sheet, super strong and uh, great company, health and beauty, recession proof, big value stock right now. And uh, we're profitable in this range. So just need to move up slightly and we're in the profit range, but I'm long, so I'll leave it on until it comes back. It will move up, I guarantee. And uh, we're in November, so we've got time for it to come back. And then uh, you can see all the extrinsic, extrinsic, uh, that we have in, I don't know why that doesn't calculate, right? It says negative, but, uh, hmm, that's wrong. It's off. Sometimes over the weekend when the market's not open, the numbers get distorted. And, uh, sometimes it's due to liquidity and only 24,000 shares. So that's probably why, but anyway, I, uh, I like Ulta, the VIX, this is my, my hedge, my protection. And we had a move up to 19 last week. Um, so uh, yeah, as it moves up 21, we make money. So the VIX, the volatility index, should there be a big drop in the market, will spike and we will collect and make more money on this. So it kind of offsets our long positions um, with uh, having leaps or actually 226 days. So not quite 365 days, but it's out there, but it's my protection. I've got a couple of those on. Um, I wanted to have some protection uh, through the election and through the beginning of the year. And then ExxonMobil, uh, another oil stock. And we, uh, I was looking at possibly closing out the call side on one of these that was already tested. So I'm going to look to do that Monday because I think oil is going to continue to move higher. And uh, ExxonMobil, yeah, we're just right at the edge of that profit zone and moving up this way. So again, when I close out this call, one of the calls that was tested, this call spread right here, then that will move this green portion up this way, our profit zone, and we'll be more long with the puts. But we've got a lot of uh, premium left to collect, $500, $504 left in premium to collect. All right, guys, if you're a beginner and this sounded a little confusing, don't worry. It did for me as well at first. We'll continue to cover different details on options trading in future videos. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button down below. Download the free options workshop. Join Moomoo. Check out the link for Tasty Trade as well. And leave a comment. Let me know what are you trading today. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.